Hi, I'm Radu, and in this course, I will show you how to quickly develop a space frame using Rhino and Grasshopper. Let's begin. If you are unfamiliar with the concept of a space frame, it is essentially a three dimensional structural framework that acts as a whole integral unit. So, as you can see, disregarding the panels that I have built on top. A space frame is a very structurally complex element that is both self-supporting in a variety of forms and shapes and can also sustain high loads. So we will be using Grasshopper within Rhino to develop this structure. And this is the script I have designed and it actually only requires this bottom part to develop the space frame whereas this entire upper section was used to develop the panels that you see here. So let me just guide you through the process. Let's hide the finished product and I'll go on to ghost it. Before I begin the explanation, please note that I have used the offset B rep component that is part of the Sasquatch plugin, which you can find on Food for Rhino and I'll explain what that does in just a second. So as we begin most of our explorations within Grasshopper, I start off with a surface. Now I have already internalized all the information so that everything goes smoothly. This is just a simple double curvature surface that I then want to offset. So in order to use offset B rep, found in Sasquatch. I need to convert my surface into a B-Rep and this is done simply with a B-Rep component and creating a link between them. And the offset B-Rep does essentially what an offset surface would do only that it does it in a similar way that Rhino deals with offsets rather than you inputting a specific uh, direction, say the normal to a surface or a, or a specific vector, this essentially takes the normals from the starting surfaces by itself and only requires the actual distance. So it's a bit of a, a shortcut to achieve the same goal. So I have created the offset surface in order to establish the structure depth. You can give it a negative value to go downwards or a positive value to go upwards. And this will be established based on the direction of your starting surface. Afterwards, we need to subdivide the surface in order to establish the hierarchy of the structural framework. So I have used a quad grid component that I can find within lunchbox and mind you I have used the grid component rather than the panel component as you can see because I'm not necessarily interested in getting the faces but I am interested in getting just the end corners establish your division values so taking all the corner points and merging them using merge I'm able to get a hundred elements within a list that each contains four elements rather than 400 items containing only one element. And whilst selecting this you may not be able to understand, if I draw a polyline around them and I cherry pick one, you will see that I am able to select essentially a rectangular border from within my grid. And the toggle here is meant to close the polyline. As you can see the difference. So now that I have the polylines created, I 
I want to be able to create the structural framework. And this is done within two steps. Initially, I want to re-extract the vertices from my polylines in order to create the arithmetic mean between them, essentially extracting the center points of each individual polygon, as you can see here. Now, at the same time, I want to establish what the plane of reference for each uh, for each of these polygons is using the deconstruct rectangle and then deconstruct plane components in order to get the z-axis for all the frames. This essentially allows me to take the z-axis component and convert it to a vector in order to obtain the actual a normal vector from each central point. So if I have my external border, one of the points is the center point to the frame, whereas the other is is moved a hundred millimeters away from it based on the normal direction at that specific point. And this essentially allows me to connect the, the moved point to each of the points, to each of the corner points, so that my end result will be a sort of pyramidal shape, only missing the base. So if I were to also select the polyline, you will see what the result would be. So now that I have created the actual three-dimensional component to the frames to give the structure its inherent rigidity. At the moment, as you can see, I only have the initial frames and their peaks, but I also want to link them in both the U and the V direction. So in order to do that, I am extracting the endpoints from the move geometry and containing them within a point component which I flatten so that I have all the points contained within a single item list with a hundred counts. I then want to create uh, partitions within this list so as an example if this list has a hundred values partitioning it gives me 10 items, each containing 10 values. As you can see now, the difference between them. And the reason they are 10, it is because that is the value that I have subdivided my starting surface to form the grid. And I recommend using the same value because that is exactly the amount of peaks that you will have in each direction. Obviously, if this is not uniform, then make sure you use the correct values. So if I get essentially 10 rows in this instance, I want to interpolate the points so they now actually appear as connected lines. If you flip the matrix, you can interpolate the points in the opposite direction. Now, selecting my initial polygon frames that are generated from the surface along with the actual pyramid forms that create the peaks for the structure and give it the three-dimensional form and their connections in both directions and I want to contain them all within a single component in this geometry component. Now if you then go ahead and explode 
all of this geometry using an explode component and output all of this into a pipe component giving it uh, an appropriate thickness you can already start to see somewhat of a finished product now you can just leave this as it is or maybe affect the cap types within the pipe component at the moment I have it set as none but you can have it flat which will make it stop at the full length of the uh, of the segments as you can see so you only end up with cylinders or you can set them to round and depending on the actual geometry this will look much nicer because it doesn't give you any holes where the segments meet but I have set it to none simply because I want to create a larger connection at each and every individual junction in order to for one mask what may be somewhat messy of an intersection and two to actually enhance the rigidity of the structure overall so I'm taking the points that I have moved to create the peaks and simply creating the sphere giving it a radius of 20 which is twice as large as the radius of the pipes combining the end geometry within a single component and you can now very clearly visualize the space frame we can go ahead and bake this and because I didn't bake it in the correct manner I have individual items whereas if you make sure to right click on the component and bake you do get the attributes menu so that you can group the baked geometry well, I will delete this because I already have it baked so unhiding it now gives me the end product that you saw at the start of the video if you want to learn more about how to create these types of panels and many more please have a look at the specialist facade series of tutorials for grasshopper where i explain this process and others in a much broader detail i hope you have found this video very informing and that it will help you achieve uh, better results within your designs and i'll catch you back in the next one